Hello everyone, I am Dr. Priya Sipaha. Today we will discuss the topic criminal trial under Indian legal system. In India, criminal law is divided into three parts. The first one is Indian Penal Code 1860. The second is Criminal Procedure Code 1973 and the third is Indian Evidence Act 1872. That means the combination of these three acts made a criminal law. Now what are these criminal law? The first one is Indian Penal Code which is a substantive law. It is a primary penal law of India which applies to all offences. It is a comprehensive code intended to cover all substantive aspects of criminal law. That means in this IPC, all the offenses and the punishment related to it has been mentioned. But between the punishment and the offenses, there is a procedure. And that procedure has been mentioned under the Criminal Procedure Code 1973. The procedure includes the manner of collection of evidence, the examination of witnesses, interrogation of accused, arrest, safeguards and procedure to be adopted by police and courts, bail, the process of criminal trial, a method of conviction and the rights of the accused of a fair trial by principle of natural justice. Then the third one is Indian Evidence Act, which is comprehensive treaty on a law of evidence, which can be used in the trial, the manner of production of the evidence in a trial and the evidentiary value which can be attached to such evidence. So the combination of IPC, CRPC and IEA is called as criminal law under Indian legal system. The next is stages of criminal trial in India. The stages are first one is FIR that is first information report. Second is investigation. Third charges. Fourth plea of guilty. Fifth prosecution evidence. Sixth statement of the accused. Seventh defense evidence. Eighth final argument and ninth is judgment. Let's discuss all the stages of criminal trial in detail. First is FIR that is first information report. Although I have made a separate video on FIR and complaint and the difference between the two. Basically, FIR is the statement of the informant as, as recorded under Section 154 of CRPC with the objective to set the criminal law in motion. That means this is the thing which is an initiative or which is something which is necessary for the police to start anything in motion. It means the informant, information by whomsoever given to the officer in charge of a police station in relation to the commission of a cognizable offense and which is first in point of time and on the strength of which the investigation into that offense is commenced. It is not substantive evidence because it is only an information and it is not the evidence of the fact which is mentioned. It can be used to corroborate the informant under Section 157 of the Indian Evidence Act or to contradict him under Section 145 of the Act if the informant is called as witness at the time of a trial. That means it is only a sort of a information of the offense which has been committed. It is not considered as the evidence. The next stage of criminal trial is commencement of investigation. This is very important stage because it includes all the efforts and process of a police officer for the collection of evidence, which includes proceeding to the spot, 
ascertaining facts and circumstances, discovery and arrest of the suspected offender, collection of evidence related to the commission of offence, which may consist of the examination of various persons, including the accused and taking off their statement in writing, then the seizure of the place or search of place of things considered necessary for their investigation and to produce at the trial. Formation of opinion as to whether on the basis of material collected, there is a case to place the accused before a magistrate for trial and if so, taking the necessary steps for the charge sheet. Then the investigation ends in a police report to the magistrate. It leads an investigating officer to reach a conclusion whether a charge sheet has to be filed or the closure report has to be made. The next stage is charges and then the plea of guilty. After investigation, there is a framing of charge. If a person is not discharged, the trial begin by framing a charge as a specific accusation against the accused, which is read and explained to him. That means if any charge has been framed against an accused, it is also necessary to be read in front of him and explain him that this offense has been committed by you and we are framing a charge against you on such and such section of IPC. The next one is conviction on plea of guilty. Now this is after framing of charge, the judge proceed to take the plea of guilty, which is an opportunity to the accused to acknowledge that he pleads guilty and does not wish to contest the case. In this, the judge's responsibility is of two types. The first one is to ensure that the plea of guilty is free and voluntary. That means there is no pressure is involved when the accused is pled for a guilty. Secondly, he has to ensure that if there has had been no pleading of guilty, was the prosecution version, if unrebutted, would have led to a conviction? If both the requirements are met, then the judge can record and accept a plea of guilty and convict the accused after listening to him on sentence. So this is very important stage. In this stage, the judge give an opportunity to the accused that he can plead for guilty. If not so, then the other procedure started. The next stage is recording of the prosecution evidence and then the statement of the accused. Recording of the prosecution evidence is examination of the prosecution witness by the police prosecutor, marking of exhibits and cross-examination by defense counsel. Then the next is statement of the accused. Section 313 of CRBC empowers the court to give an opportunity of being heard to an accused and explain the fact and circumstances appearing in the evidence against him. Under this section, an accused shall not be administered on oath and the accused may refuse to answer the question so asked. The answer given by the accused may be taken into consideration in such inquiry or trial and put in evidence for and for or against him. So again, this is very important. The next is defense evidence and final argument. Defense evidence means in this cases of accused not being acquitted by the court, the defense is given an opportunity to present any defense evidence in support of the accused. The defense can produce both oral and documentary evidence. In India, since the burden of proof is on the prosecution, the defense in general is not required to give any defense evidence. Final argument on both the side is the last stage. 
once the public prosecutor and the defense counsel present their arguments the court generally reserves its judgment The last stage of criminal trial is judgment. It is a final reasoned decision of a court as to the guilty or innocence of the accused. After application of judicial mind, the judge delivers a final judgment holding an accused guilty of an offence or acquitting him of the particular offence. When the person is convicted, then both sides are invited to give arguments on the punishment. which is to be awarded this is usually done when the person is convicted of an offense whose punishment is life imprisonment or capital punishment so it is very necessary that there must be a reasoned decision or a judgment by the judge in the court there are three types of criminal trial under indian legal system the first one is warrant cases which includes cases which are serious in nature the second is summons cases which includes cases less serious in nature and the third one is summary trial which is a like of summons cases but here only petty cases are considered for the speedy trial the first type of trial is related with warrant cases it is related to offenses punishable with death imprisonment for life or imprisonment for a term exceeding 2 years that means these are the offenses which are serious in nature these employed in most offenses such as theft rape murder kidnapping cheating etc except in case of defamation charges must be mentioned in a warrant case personal appearance of the accused is mandatory that's why warrant has been issued a warrant case can not be converted into a summons case this is very important the accused can examine and cross examine the witness more than once the trial procedure in respect of these offenses is contained in section 238 to 250 of crpc The CRPC provides for two types of procedure for the trial of warrant cases by a magistrate. The first one is those instituted upon a police report where a lot of records made during investigation by the police is made available to the court and to the accused person. This is a very normal procedure. And the second one is those instituted upon complaint. That means otherwise than a on police report which such record cannot be where such record cannot be available that means as i have discussed that i have already discussed in my previous videos the difference between the complaint and fir fir is always uh, information which is to the police officer but complaint can be made directly to the magistrate so the second one is on the basis of the complaint where the role of police is not necessary the second type of trial is related with summon cases these cases are tried with much less formalities than warrant cases the manner of these their trial is less elaborated and the method of preparing the record of evidence is less formal these cases are related to an offense punishable with imprisonment not exceeding 2 two years that means these are not as serious in nature as the warrant cases if a magistrate after examining the case does not find it fit to be called as a summon case he may convert it into a warrant case now the summon case can be converted into a warrant case but warrant case cannot be converted into a summon case The trial procedure prescribed for these cases is contained in section 251 to 259 of CRPC. In respect of these cases there is no need to frame a charge. The session code gives the substance of the accusation 
to the accused when the person appears in pursuance to the summons. The court has a power to convert a summon case into a warrant case if the magistrate thinks that it is in the interest of the justice. The last trial is summary trial. Basically, summary trial is a procedure which is similar to the summon case. This particular summary trial is based on the principle that is justice must be delayed, not denied. So this is something which is assigned to the magistrate for the speedy trial. In the judgment of a summary trial, the judge should record the substance of the evidence and a brief statement of the finding of the court with reasons. The trial procedure for these cases is contained in section 260 to 265 of CRPC. Section 262 of the code listed certain offenses which may be tried summarily by the chief judicial magistrate, any metropolitan magistrate or any judicial magistrate of first class. A first class magistrate must first be authorized by the respective high court to the effect before he may try cases summarily under this section. These cases are offenses not punishable with death, life imprisonment or imprisonment for a term exceeding two years, then theft or receiving or retaining stolen, pro stolen property or assistant in the concealing or disposal of stolen property provided that the value of stolen property is below rupees 2000. Then the next is lurking house trespass and house breaking by night. Abetment and attempt of any of the above mentioned offenses. Offenses with respect to which complaints may be made under section 20 of the Cattle Trespass Act 1871. Apart from the first class or metropolitan magistrate, a second class magistrate may, if so empowered by the High Court, may summarily try an offence which is punishable with fine or with imprisonment not exceeding six months or the abetment or attempt to commit such an offence. A summary trial tried by a magistrate without being empowered to do so is void. The maximum sentence that may be awarded by the way of summary trial is three months with or without fine. This is all about the criminal trial under Indian legal system. If you want the detailed note, you may visit to my website that is priyasapaha.com. Hope you like the video. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.